In this video, we're going to talk about how to pass or send data between pages. Now, why would you need to pass data? Like, if you already have data on one page, why would I need to send it to another page? Well, let me show you two examples. So here I've got a list of users, and when I click into any of the users, it brings me to their individual page. So I need to pass the user data from the first page to this second page. Okay, here's another example. So here's a rental example. So I've got a bunch of properties here that I might want to rent and I select a date here and then I like this one and you can see that that date is sent to this page because when I book this property, I'm going to need to send along that date with it. So I had the date on one page and I needed to pass it to this page. So why do you need to pass data? Well, there are two main reasons. Either you have more data than you're displaying on one page. That was like our first example with the users. So I had all that data. I just was only displaying part of it. And on that next page, I wanted to display all of it. So then I could, so I passed it and then showed it. The second reason to pass data is when you're going to use that data to do something else. So maybe you need to send it off to get more information from an API or a database, or maybe I want to make some mutation to that data. Maybe I'm making some sort of calculation. So let me show you how to set this up in Flutterflow. Here's the overview. I've got two pages and to pass data, there needs to be two steps. I need to set up the sending or passing data on the first page, and then I need to set up the receiving data on the second page. So how do you do that? Well, the first step is to set up the receiving and we call that a parameter and you can have multiple parameters as many as you want. And the next step is to set up that sending and you do that through a navigation action. So that's it. Just two steps. So let's do it. Okay. So I've got two pages here, page one and page two. So let's just send some data. So the first step is to set up the receiving these parameters and you get there by either clicking out here on the canvas or just selecting this root widget here. And then you'll see this page parameters. That is the thing that will receive the data. Okay, so let's add one here and add parameter and you give it a name. So I'm just gonna say this is first name and then you select what type it is. And you've got all the different types of data you would expect. And for this, we're just going to do a string. Now you can select whether this is a list of strings and whether this is required. If it is required, then when we go to this next step with navigate, it'll require us to set that value. And then finally, we have the option to set a default value. And this is for the situation if the value being passed is either null or an empty string. Now, of course, you don't have to set this, but keep in mind that if you bind this parameter to something on the page that can't accept null, like a text widget, that you set this default here or you set it in the text widget when you do that binding. So I'm just going to set in name right here. Confirm. OK, so we've got that set up. The second step is to set up the sender, and that's just through a navigation action on this first page. So let's do this. I've got a column here. Let's just add in a button and let's give it a little breathing room. And this is going to be a navigate action. So we'll come over to our action flow editor, add an action, add this navigate to, and we're going to the second page. And down here we have parameters. Now, if we didn't do that first step, we can define a parameter here. That'll just bring us over to the second page into our parameters where we can add a parameter or add additional one if you've already had it set up. But we already have the one we've set. And so we can just come back to this page and we see this pass option. And we only see this here because we've already defined a parameter on that next page. If we didn't, we wouldn't see this because we don't have anything to pass yet. But we do now. So let's just click this and it adds in the parameter that we have, that first name. So we want to twirl this open. And if we had multiple parameters, we could see them here and we could select a different one. And then we add the value in here. That is what is being sent, what is being passed from this page to the next. Now, if you put something in here, this would just be a hard coded value that we're sending over here. But most of the time it's going to be a dynamic value. OK, well, we don't really have any dynamic values here, so let's add one. So let's just put in a text field right here. 
and let's drag it above here and let's just give it the same padding as before okay so now we've got this so we can come back to this parameter and instead of hard coding that we're going to set this by binding it and we want it from here which means it's from a widget state now one of the cool features of flutterflow is that you can actually just click on this and it'll bind it that would be the same as going in here, opening this widget state dropdown, and then just selecting that. Beautiful. And confirm. Okay, beautiful. That's all set up. So we've received it on our second page by... So we've received it by setting up our parameter on the second page. We've sent it through a navigation action, but we're missing one thing. And that is, while we sent it over to this page, we won't be able to see anything because we're not doing anything with our value that we're being passed. So let's just add some text in here. So let's add in text here. And let's just come over to our column and stretch it out and come over to this text here and just give it a center so it's in the middle and make it a little bigger. Beautiful. Okay, so now we want to bind this value here to a page parameter. That is, that's the bucket that's going to catch the value that we send, that first name. Beautiful. That is, we just bound, and I'm clicking out here on the canvas, and if we just cancel out of here, we just bound to this page parameter right here. This value is bound to this. Okay, beautiful. Let's test this out. All right, I'm on page one, and I'm going to pass my name right here and beautiful there we go and that's the basics of how to pass data between pages but let's look at the two examples we started out with to see some other common use cases so if you remember in the first example i had a list of users and when you clicked on these users you went into their particular user page and these users are coming from a firestore collection of users that i have with just the standard data you would expect out of a user okay so I've got a list view here and it's bound to that users collection. So I'm just displaying all those users. So here I'm getting all of the user documents, but I'm only displaying their name and image. Now, when I click into it, I'm displaying more information like their email. So what I want to do is pass that whole user document. Okay, great. So let's go through our two steps. First, let's set up our parameters. So let's go to that second page, the profile page. And you can see here in the page parameters is that I've got one set up here and it's of type document. That is a document from Firestore. That's what I'm expecting to receive. Okay, great. Then let's look at how we sent it. So we're back in our users and you can look in your widget tree here for this little green icon to see where our action is bound. And it's bound on this container right here. And you can see we've got a navigation action and our parameter right here so if we twirl that open you can see where this is bound so let me come in here again and close this up so you can see that we've got this users document and when I twirl it open I get the option to send that whole document so the whole record of the user that's what I want to send and it knows that because I've already set up that parameter on the next page okay confirm beautiful so that's all set up. And of course, I have to display that data. So in my profile here, I have that bound to the image right here. So if I come in and you can see this path down here and let's just come in and look at it again. I want to bind it to the page parameter. So I've only got one. It's this user record here. And when I click that, I'm getting the document property and it shows me all of the properties available. That is, these are all the fields that we looked at when we looked in the Firestore in the collection. Great, and it's the photo URL, beautiful. And it works the same with all the other fields we have bound. So I've got a display name here, and when I scroll up, same thing, get document property, and here it's not the photo URL, it's the display name, beautiful. And that's passing a document. Let's look at our last example. So our same two steps, we've got this page here, which is our first page, and our second page is this property page. But what are we sending on this one? Well, we were just sending that date. Okay, so on this second page, I should be receiving a date through my parameters. So when I come into my page parameters here, you can see I'm sending two things here. First, I'm sending a document, same as with the users. That's where I'm getting the image and the address of the property. But I'm also sending a date time value. So there we go, we've got it set up. And of course we have it bound over here and we gotta send it. So let's look at that. We can see that we have that 
navigate action on this. And we've got our date parameter being set by this widget state of date picked, which is an action on this button right here. And of course, we are passing the document right here. And you can see that it's coming in from this properties document because we have this bound to that collection. And that's how to pass data between pages in Flutterflow.